Welcome to the Private School Leader Podcast, where private school leaders learn how to thrive and not just survive as they serve and lead their schools. I strongly believe that it is possible to have a long and happy and fulfilling career as a private school leader. And my passion is to help you figure out exactly how to do just that right here on the Private School Leader Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Minkus. I love sports movies. I love, love, love sports movies. My favorite sports movie is Rocky IV, but I love most of the Rocky movies. I also love Miracle, uh, the story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic men's hockey team. I love Hoosiers and Remember the Titans, Field of Dreams, Tin Cup, Caddyshack, and many, many more sports movies. But there's a sports movie that came out in 2009 called Invictus that is pretty amazing. And it's not just amazing because of the sports story, but because of the larger story that surrounds it. And the movie Invictus and came out in 2009 starring Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. And the movie is about the events in South Africa before and during the 1995 Rugby World Cup. And so if you know your history, you know that Nelson Mandela was released from prison not too many years before that. He uh, ended apartheid, dismantled it in South Africa. And the Springboks was the name of the U.S., excuse me, the the, um, South African rugby team. And they were not expected to do well. And the only reason that they were even in the 1995 Rugby World Cup is because they were the host nation. And so everyone expected them to do very poorly. And of course, that's not how the story went. And the 1995 Rugby World Cup and the Springboks actually was a huge uh, piece in moving things forward with unifying the people of South Africa after Nelson Mandela ended apartheid. And so the movie is called Invictus. You might want to check it out if you like sports movies. Maybe you haven't seen that one. But Nelson Mandela, in my opinion, is one of the most influential leaders in history. He was inspirational and courageous. He was a servant leader and he united a country and then forever changed that country. And of course, his story is legendary. His book, Long Walk to Freedom, is a bestseller. Um, an amazing autobiography. And of course, Mandela was a tireless fighter for racial equality, but that viewpoint got him thrown into prison for 27 years. And when he was released, he was elected president of his country. And there were many, many people who wanted him to use his positional authority to settle scores and get revenge and gain retribution on those that had put him in prison But instead, he went about healing the country and uniting the country. And so, a great leader. And I want you to think about and learn a little bit about some of the exceptional leadership qualities that Nelson Mandela displayed, and also some of the things that he said. And then I'm going to talk to you today about how you can apply those to your role as a private school leader. So, On today's episode, I'm going to share with you the four exceptional leadership qualities of Nelson Mandela and four quotes that will illuminate his leadership style and help all of us become better leaders. But before we get into that, I've created a free resource for you called the Top Six Ways to Protect Your School from a Lawsuit. This is a 10-page PDF that will help you keep your staff and students safe and help keep your school out of court. Litigation is expensive and time-consuming and extremely stressful, and this common sense guide will help you to be more intentional and proactive when it comes to protecting your school. And you can grab that over at theprivateschoolleader.com slash lawsuit. And if you're listening to this episode when it comes out in the summertime, that's a time when maybe you can read this and start thinking proactively about some things around your school that you can make more safe. And you can grab that again, the top six ways to protect your school from a lawsuit. You can get that over at theprivateschoolleader.com slash lawsuit. 
And one more thing I'd love to hear from you. If you're getting value from any of these podcast episodes, just shoot me an email. Um, I'm at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com, M-A-R-K dot O dot M-I-N-K-U-S at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear about a strategy that you picked up or just maybe what one of your pain points was from this past school year. And uh, maybe it could be an upcoming episode on the podcast. So thanks again for listening. All right. So we're going to break this podcast into two parts. The first is the four leadership qualities, outstanding leadership qualities of Nelson Mandela, and then four quotes. And for the leadership qualities, um, I was inspired by a Forbes article on Nelson Mandela. And leadership quality number one is to show courage when we face adversity. As private school leaders, we need to show courage when we face adversity. So this was evident in Mandela's life when he was faced with overwhelming opposition in his fight for equality, and he maintained the courage of his convictions. Um, And that, as I said before, landed him in prison for 27 years. But he still found ways to build relationships with his adversaries through his writing and sometimes through meetings. And then he was able to develop strategies that he was able to make work within the confines of his situation that allowed him to continue towards his goals so that when he was actually released from prison, he wasn't starting from zero. He had already started to build relationships. And then, as I said before, He also faced a tremendous amount of pressure when he got out of prison for people to, from people to um, use his position to get revenge against those that had put him in prison. But he was all about uniting people and building bridges and building relationships. And so, showing courage in the face of adversity, how does that apply to us as private school leaders? Well, We face adversity all the time. It might be enrollment numbers. It could be the budget. There's been more than one occasion earlier in my career where I was wondering, how are we going to make payroll? And that's an incredibly stressful place to be. And many of you have been in that situation more than once. Your adversity might come from the parents at your school or a couple of families that leave and they try to take a couple other families with them or just trying to hire teachers when you can't find any adversity. And that's not even getting into big things like um, a, a scandal or the, the death of a student or um, some kind of catastrophic thing that would happen at the school like a tornado or fire. I'm just talking about things that happen in the course of a, a good school year. But When we face adversity, I wonder if we go into self-preservation mode. Um, Do we start to point fingers and blame when it comes to the budget or with enrollment? Well, it's this, it's that, it's the economy, it's it's, um, these parents don't appreciate what we do here or whatever the case might be. I know that I used to do this. Um, When I was faced with adversity, um, I would kind of shrink from that and would go into like preserving myself and start blaming others or looking for a scapegoat, looking also to put out as many excuses as possible. But I fortunately have left that in the past and I don't get it right every time, but I really try when I am facing adversity at my school is to try to show some courage and to lead by example, with optimism and not with uh, toxic positivity, but just that optimism that we are going to get through this. Let's do this. And of course, all of us faced adversity in March of 2020 with the shutdown for the pandemic. And if we could get through that, we can get through most anything. And so we showed courage, we showed resilience, we showed innovative thinking, and there were ways that we figured out how to do school that had never been done before. So you need to draw from your past of times that you've faced adversity and you've risen to the challenge 
for the next time that you face adversity. And I heard a saying a long time ago, and I don't know who said it, but the quote is, when you don't have the confidence, reach for the courage. And so that could be the adversity of having a very, very difficult conversation with a teacher or with a parent. When you don't have the confidence, reach for the courage. So leadership characteristic number one of Nelson Mandela is to show courage when we face adversity. All right. Leadership quality number two, believe in your vision. Believe in your vision. So Nelson Mandela had a very clear and very consistent vision of South Africa without racial inequality. And he was adamant about the fact that that needed to be something that was real and that existed in that country. And he held on to that vision in spite of overwhelming indications that it would never, ever happen. And imagine just being in prison for 27 days and what that would feel like and how much you would miss your family and how much you would get discouraged. He was in prison for 27 years. So just that belief, that strong belief in your vision. And so let's apply that to us as private school leaders. First of all, have a vision. Sometimes we're so busy putting out fires and just trying to hire teachers and enroll families and and deal with discipline problems that we don't take the time to think about where do we want our school to be in five years and then how are we going to get there. So have a vision and then cast that vision and communicate it clearly to your staff and use vivid language and use mini posters. Um, I'll give you an example. When I do a talk, um, especially in August at the beginning of the year, um, for my divisions of intermediate school and middle school. If there's something that's a real point of emphasis or a theme for the year or something like that, um, I'll actually have my wife create something uh, of a little image or a little saying or a little thing that turns out then into a mini poster on um, cardstock and just run them off on the copy machine and then put them in the paper cutter. And then after I give my talk where I cast the vision for the year, the theme for the year, try to communicate it clearly, try to use vivid language, then I hand out those little mini posters to my teachers and say, hey, I want you to put this on the bulletin board next to your desk or you know, tape this to your monitor. And um, then I walk around during the year and I see it and then I'll refer back to it. And so the, it's, it's one thing to have a vision. It's another thing to cast the vision, but you got to communicate it clearly. And then you have to have things that will remind people of the vision. So coming back to it in other meetings, in other ways, but also those posters and um, maybe even having other imagery around the school or in your meeting room where it's always, always in front of you. Because I can tell you this. The way that Nelson Mandela got through 27 years and stayed on that vision and then had the um, confidence and the cur- the courage and the energy to implement that vision when he got out of prison, he it's because he was super clear and he believed in it. So leadership quality number two of Nelson Mandela is to believe in your vision. All right. Quality number three, commit to doing what is right. Commit to doing what is right. And I mentioned this before that when he was president, Nelson Mandela was faced with a lot of people who really, really wanted revenge and retribution against the white rulers who had promoted apartheid. And they put a tremendous amount of pressure on him to do things to those people, such as throw them in prison. And he was all about uniting, and he didn't want to do that, even though he faced a lot of pressure to do so, because he knew that that was just going to make things worse. And when it came to the national rugby team that I mentioned at the beginning that's portrayed in, in Invictus, the, the Springboks, they were revered and adored by the white population. And in spite of the overwhelming demands from his followers to actually do away with the team name as a punishment for the whites, Mandela chose to allow the name to stand. And not only that, but he persisted in bringing the cherished Rugby World Cup 
to South Africa in 1995 and then using this to unite all of South Africa behind their national team. And I won't spoil the ending for you, but it's amazing as far as how that all turned out with the Springboks and what that meant to South Africa. So Nelson Mandela, leadership quality, commit to doing what is right. He felt it wasn't right to punish the white people, even though what they had done was wrong. The white rulers, those in, those in positions of power, to be clear, who had promoted apartheid. That was not every white person in South Africa at the time. But then he used that rugby team as a vehicle, but he didn't change that name. And so how does that apply to us as private school leaders? Well, we want to do what is right. We want to have integrity. We want to make choices and decisions that are based on our values and our principles and show integrity. But the bottom line is sometimes it is uncomfortable to give honest feedback and that it's tempting to be evasive and to manipulate and to speak in half truths or to be unclear because it's more comfortable to not give that totally honest feedback. And let's face it, we've all been in the situation where there's a student that they just really need to go. They need to be expelled from the school or not invited back at the end of a school year for the next year. Or there's a teacher that needs to be fired or needs to not have their contract renewed. And it's going to be really hard. It's going to be a really hard conversation with that parent. It's going to be a really hard conversation with that teacher. But it is, is it the right thing to do? Um, doing the right thing is rarely easy. But if we commit to doing what's right, we're going to, we're going to do what's right and we're going to, uh, it's going to benefit our schools. Because sometimes when we avoid things, those problems don't go away. They just get worse. And then we keep the wrong kids and we keep the wrong teachers around for too long. And what happens? We lose some good kids and some good families and we lose some good teachers. Most of us have been there. I've certainly been there and I've regretted it tremendously. And I'm going to say something that is one of the most important things. And it's one of the most, uh, that's one of the most important things you'll hear on this episode. And that is that One of the most important things that we do, and also one of the hardest things that we do, is to do the right thing. So it's the most important thing to have integrity and do the right thing, but it's also one of the hardest things that we do, doing the right thing. So leadership quality number three, commit to doing the right thing. We're going to focus on integrity and leading with our values and with integrity. Leadership quality number four of Nelson Mandela is to show dedication to your followers. Show dedication to your followers. So this might be the most important trait of a true leader. Um, Nelson Mandela's quest for racial equality was all about his people. And While he was black and it was about his black people who were being persecuted and held down by apartheid, it was about everyone. And through all of his trials and tribulations, his motivation, his big compelling reason why he was doing this, the thing that gave him motivation to persevere through all he went through was his focus on the welfare of his people, the people who followed him, the people who believed in him. And we as private school leaders, we need to prioritize our people. And John Maxwell says that a leader without followers is just a person taking a walk. You know, if you think you're a leader and you turn around and you don't see anyone following you, you're not a leader. And so your people, my people, are our second most valuable asset. Now, I've said before on this podcast that you are your most important asset. Taking care of you and your health, your physical health, your mental health. You, you only get one you, all right? And and we generally put everybody else first and we put ourselves last. And what that's doing is driving school leaders out of education or putting us into the hospital with health problems. 
So your number one most valuable asset is you, but your second most valuable asset and resource in your school are your people. And we need to be intentional and pour ourselves into our people, care for them, encourage them, and just really do everything that we can to prioritize our teachers and our staff. So leadership quality number four from Nelson Mandela is to show dedication to your followers. All right, so I promise that we're also going to talk about four quotes from Nelson Mandela and then apply them to our leadership at our schools. So quote number one, I want to give a little setup for this quote. See, Nelson Mandela's father was a tribal leader. And as a boy, Nelson Mandela would accompany his father to these tribal meetings. And years later, someone asked him about that. And they said, well, what do you remember about those tribal meetings and what did you learn about leadership and he said i learned two things quote they always sat in a circle and my father was always the last to speak so think on that for a moment they always sat in a circle and my father was always the last to speak and so there's two things two takeaways there for us the circle implies that there's no positional authority. There's no head of the table. There's no person at the podium or the sage on the stage and everyone else just has to listen to the person with positional authority. If we're truly collaborative as leaders, we are going to not take that place where our ego wants to take us. We're going to sit in a circle. And his father was always the last to speak. I know that sometimes in meetings that I'm the first to speak, but I want you to pause and think about this for a moment, is that if you throw something out in a meeting and say, hey, let's discuss this, and then you give about three seconds of wait time, and then you give your idea first, then you've really just extinguished all the other ideas in the room from your team, from your teachers, from your colleagues. I've learned this the hard way but I've really tried to get a lot better at this is in a meeting, especially when you're trying to problem solve or collaborate is try to be the last to speak and see what kind of ideas actually come out from people when you're the last to speak. All right. Quote number two, Nelson Mandela said, quote, a leader is like a shepherd. He stays behind the flock letting the most nimble go out ahead, whereupon the others follow, not realizing that all along they are being directed from behind. And of course, what Nelson Mandela is talking about here with the analogy of the shepherd is servant leadership. And we're on episode 36 of this podcast. You know how I feel about servant leadership. And this is a perfect example, leading from behind, directing, Um, nudging people in this direction, meeting the needs. You know, the shepherd knows his flock. He knows his sheep by name. He knows the ones that are wandering off. And just that care and that compassion and that gentle leadership and leading by example and serving first, a servant's heart and leading second. And just to refer you to two episodes, and I'll put them in the show notes, which you can find at theprivateschoolleader.com slash episode 36. Servant leadership is in episodes five and episode six. I did two episodes on servant leadership. I'd encourage you to go back and listen to those. So Nelson Mandela talks about how all along they are being directed from behind. All right, on to quote number three. I love this one so much. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. I used to be way more uptight and way more serious when I was a young leader. And that was because many of the people that I supervised were older than me. And I didn't want them to think that I was being a foolish young person and that I was didn't know what I was doing and things of that nature. But I know now that when it's a spirit day, Um, when it's a 
you know, dress down day at our school, our colors are blue and gold when it's a, you know, blue and gold dress down day. Sometimes middle school kids, high school kids, they don't think it's that cool to, you know, dress on the theme day or to, to do the thing, whatever the thing is. Okay. Sometimes teachers are a little too awkward to do that. You know, I've had in the past colleagues on the admin team that just really felt uncomfortable, you know, dressing down or doing something a little silly or school spirit oriented or whatever the case might be. All right. So what I do, and I've done this for years now, is, is that I just really think about, well, if I let my own light shine, I give permission for other people to do the same. And I'll give you an example, and it's actually a 10-year-old girl that is was the one who was the leader. And so there's some fourth grade girls. There's one girl in particular that um, we had a blue out day for a soccer game, and um, she went all out, blue face paint, blue hair, blue tutu, you name it. And at the, that was near the beginning of the year, and there were some other kids just kind of checking her out and being like, okay, that's, that's interesting, that's kind of weird. And that was in September, and then in, in October, we had a pink out for breast cancer awareness. And again, she went all out with her pink head to toe. And I noticed that a few other kids in fourth grade were um, dressed up a little bit and kind of, you know, showing that, that spirit. And then over the course of the year, I just watched it unfold. And as we got to February with our spirit week leading up to the faculty versus eighth grade basketball game, all of a sudden, all these fourth graders are just wearing tutus and face paint. And they're like, and where did they get it from? There was that example was set. And then it unconsciously gave other per people permission to do the same. So. I know that sometimes it's uncomfortable for us to do certain things, but as leaders, we give people permission to do things when we do the things. And so even if it's out of our comfort zone, sometimes we just need to put ourselves out there a little bit. So quote number three is we let our own light shine. We unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Just something to think about. And then finally, quote number four if you want the cooperation of humans around you, you must make them feel they are important. And you do that by being genuine and humble. So he's talking about authenticity and humility. And people want to feel important. They want to feel needed. They want to feel seen. They want to feel heard. And they also want to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And if we as school leaders, with authenticity and humility, prioritize our people, we're genuine and we're humble, and we make them feel important and seen and heard, and then make sure that they keep, we keep that vision before them of how what we're doing is so important for these kids. It's all about the kids that you will see, instead of just getting up there with your positional authority and babbling away about this, that, and the other thing, just be a little more humble, a little more authentic, a little more you. Just be real and put a little emotion into it, put a little vulnerability into it because what we do is emotional work and people don't want to be led by a robot. They want to be led by a real human being. And so I'll say it one more time. If we want people if we want their cooperation, you must make them feel they're important, and you do that by being genuine and humble. All right, so let's hit the big takeaways from today's episode. Leadership quality number one of Nelson Mandela, show courage when we face adversity. Number two, believe in your vision. Number three, commit to doing what is right. And leadership quality number four, show dedication to your followers. And then four quotes from Nelson Mandela. When asked about what he learned from his father, the tribal leader, he said that he noticed that they always sat in a circle and my father was always the last to speak. Quote number two, a leader is like a shepherd. He stays behind the flock, letting the most nimble go out ahead, whereupon the others follow, not realizing that all along they are being directed 
from behind. Quote number three, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And quote number four, if you want the cooperation of humans around you, you must make them feel they are important. And you do that by being genuine and humble. Nelson Mandela was able to, with courage and determination, withstand an incredible amount of adversity, resist the pressure and the temptation for revenge and retribution, and then unite a country that had been battling each other for generations. And he did it with servant leadership. So, what's your call to action for today? Pick one leadership quality and then start to emphasize it in your leadership practice. One leadership quality and then start to use it in your practice. And everything that I just said, the four leadership qualities and the four quotes will be in the show notes at the private school leader.com slash episode 36. And then I want to give you a quick reminder that I have another free guide for you called five strategies to help you work with difficult parents. Working with parents is part of the job and most of our parents are great, but some of them can be very demanding and emotional and difficult. And I've created a guide that will give you tools to have better relationships and better meetings with the difficult parents at your school. And you can get that over at the private school leader.com slash parents as a thank you just for listening every week to the podcast. And I mentioned before, you can email me at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And a new episode comes out every week on Apple, Podcasts, Spotify. If you like getting podcasts on YouTube, it's there as well. And I'm on Instagram at the private school leader or Twitter at the PS leader. And if you got value from this episode, I'd love it if you would share it with another leader at your school or someone that you think is an aspiring leader at your school. And I've been your host, Mark Minkus. I just want to say I appreciate you and how dedicated you are and all the amazing work that you're doing at your school. And thank you so much for taking some of your time, your precious time out of your week to be here today and to listen to the podcast. And I will see you next time right here on the Private School Leader Podcast. And until then, always remember to serve first, lead second, and make a difference.